Hello everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I absolutely love the Raspberry Pi. This is an 8 gigabyte model and it is a beast of a single board computer, but it is not without its faults. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to check out some of its faults and we're going to show you some solutions. Let's get started. As we take a look at the board, there's absolutely nothing wrong on this side. We've got a couple of USB 2 ports, a couple of USB 3 ports. We've got Ethernet. All that's great. Um, no problems there. But as we move around to this side, the problems begin. Uh, the first thing is it's nice that they provide two of these little micro HDMI ports. And... Um, I honestly, though, would rather have a single full-size HDMI port than two of these mini ones. And the main thing is, is just finding adapters for them. I have entire boxes of HDMI cables, but I always need to find a special cable or special adapter to get these things to work. And I find that pretty annoying. And while we're looking at the top of the board, this thing is a beast of a CPU. The problem is most people say it requires active cooling and that in and of itself is not a problem. But the problem is most of the cooling fans are absolutely terrible. They make a ton of noise. They don't even do such a great job of cooling. You have to add your own little heat sinks. Pretty annoying. As we flip the board over, you can see that I have a high quality Samsung Evo 256 gig micro SD card in this thing and that has actually served me pretty well but the fact that you need a micro SD card is pretty frustrating these things are not hard drives they're not made to be run the same way that hard drives are run and uh, there's always reliability problems things like that plus they're expensive the next thing that annoys me is although this thing has a wonderful 40 pin GPIO thing there is nary a label to be found on here. So you don't know what all these pins do. And so I always find myself going back and forth to the documentation to figure out what each of these pins does. And uh, that just kind of sucks. Now we are actually going to tackle the pin label problems in a couple of different ways. But the first way we're going to do it is with the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. And you see on PCBWay, I got 10 of these PCBs and they run five bucks plus about $7 shipping. And I got 10 of these little breakout boards for the Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, every single pin is labeled. Uh, they took me about two minutes to solder up and I was able to, uh, you know, it's a little fluxy, but uh, these things fit right on top of the Raspberry Pi and allow you to see what you're plugging in, which is pretty awesome. They also offer an extra benefit that when you're doing your prototyping, you can actually remove this and keep all of your wires hooked up and then set it aside while you're doing other things on the Raspberry Pi. So these things, again, I ordered them from PCBWay.com and they're just super simple. They're an awesome sponsor of the channel. You can hit one button and get it in your cart and have them to you in just a couple of days. Now, the next thing I want to show you is not sponsored, but I bought it and I loved it so much that I had to show it to you for this video. It is the Argon 1 M.2 Raspberry Pi case, and I went ahead and bought the 18 watt power supply to go with it. Now, I have this thing hooked up and I love it so much, but I'm willing to rip it apart because it solves so many problems. So I think it's important for me to give you just a little bit of backstory. I was looking to upgrade a server and one of these retro Pi things. And uh, this thing had, it's a cool looking case, but the fan is garbage. And obviously it was limited to 256 gigabytes. Now, um, you know, obviously I own a whole bunch of ROMs. There are places online where you could download pre-configured images with up to like, let's say a terabyte of ROMs, you know, and then put it on your Raspberry Pi. Um, but obviously I can't tell you where you could get such ROMs. So I went online to start checking out to see how much it would cost to buy a one terabyte micro SD card. Now again, I don't love micro SD cards for this type of thing, but it seemed like the best thing at the time. And I'm astounded. First of all, I'm astounded that you could fit a terabyte on something that small. But beyond that, uh, just astounded at how expensive they are. I mean, they're 100 to $150, you know, depending on the brand and the quality and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, that's a lot of data to lose if something goes bad. And so um, they are pretty dang expensive. And that um, is what led me to bringing in 
this bad boy. And this is the Argon 1 M.2. Let's take a look. So this is an absolutely beautiful, in my opinion, Raspberry Pi case. It is sleek, it has that stealth fighter look, and um, it's got a built-in fan, it's got M.2, we're gonna get to that in just a minute. Um, but it is just such a cool case to put your Raspberry Pi in. I mean, it is just the perfect case, in my opinion, and I'm gonna show you why. So let's start looking at the problems that I addressed earlier. The first one is the one that we've solved with this board, but there's also another way to solve it. And check this out. This magnetically attached cover actually lists the port labels on the case itself, which I think is just an awesome idea. Beyond that, it even has some color coding in there, which I think is pretty sweet. And what's really cool is that this thing actually will, the clearance is closed, but this little thing will actually fit on here and fit on this case. So you can actually use the two of these together. So these things together solve the GPIO problem. And what's really sweet, these things just attach with magnets, it just clips on there. And that is just a very nice little way to handle that. Now the next problem that I brought up, and this really does drive me crazy, is these little um, micro HDMI connectors. They feel weak, they're um, hard to find the adapters for. I've got a million HDMI cables, but only a couple of these. And they solve that by actually breaking out not one, but two full-size HDMI ports right on the case. And I'm gonna show you how they do that in just a minute. So we're gonna take this thing apart and uh, I'll show you how it works. Now, the bottom of this thing is actually a semi-transparent, feels like acrylic or something like that. Uh, so it's kind of cool. You can still see the lights going on in there, but uh, it does go together with four screws. So we're just gonna take it apart and I'm gonna make sure I pull that USB adapter out of the side and uh, we'll see what this thing's got going on, on the inside. So we've got the screws out. We're gonna go ahead and pull this out. And then that gives us access to the back. Now, the first thing you'll see is this tray here, and this includes an M.2 slot. Now, here's what makes this really magical. I was saying earlier that the one terabyte cards run $100 to $150. You can buy the case and a one terabyte SATA M.2 drive for $97 combined. So you get all the features, the better reliability of the M.2 SSD, the awesome case and everything for about the price of a micro SD card and definitely cheaper than the price of a quality micro SD card. And I think that is pretty awesome. So this board just sits here by itself. There's not really much to do to it. You just put the single screw in there. And as you can see, the little M.2 drive comes right out. I'm gonna show you uh, something else in just a second. So I'm gonna leave that out. And we're gonna put that over here. I'm gonna put the screw over here for safekeeping. And then this thing just actually comes in here with just a couple of screws right down here. We're gonna take these out and I'm gonna show you this carrier board, which I love also. So this little carrier board, I'm gonna gently take it off. So this little carrier board here has the two full-size HDMI ports and the speaker jack, which is just brilliant. So as you can see here, you just carefully line it up and you pop it together and your Raspberry Pi becomes one with the carrier board. And then over here, we have something that's really cool. This is actually a very quality fan. Um, I've mentioned this case before and you know, they look the same. I mean, that looks this, like the same kind of fan. Well, you can actually see there's more blades on this one. But uh, this fan is just quiet and it just feels like good quality. In addition to that, it actually has these heat contact pads and these, um, these heat spreaders basically on the case itself. And that's because this thing is aluminum. It actually uses the entire case as a heat sink. And then one of the things that we haven't mentioned is the whole idea that I said the Raspberry Pi does not have a power button, but this case actually gives you a power button. And not only does it give you a power button, but it gives you the ability to choose whether you want to have to hit the power button after you lose power or if you want it to automatically come on. So let's say when I use this thing as a server, in the event that the power would go out and the UPS would go out, this thing will automatically boot your Raspberry Pi when the power comes back on. And then in addition to that, it actually has infrared so you can use an IR remote control to control the thing, which is very, very sweet. So as you can see here, the GPIO pins are actually coming up here. So this board moves the GPIO pins over here so that you can get them with the little labels and with the color codes right there. So what you do 
is now you make sure your heat pad things are on there and you carefully line this thing up with the GPIO port and you push it on and you put in a couple screws and you are good to go. Now I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about the one downside that people say about this case. And for me, it's not really a downside, but it is that the uh, micro SD card is not accessible when you have it in the case. So you actually do have to take the back off to get to the micro SD card. But as you can see here, I'm not booting from the micro SD card because there wasn't one in there. I'm booting from the M.2 and that's what makes this thing magical. So what you do is you go on the Raspberry Pi website and you download a little SD image and you put it in here and your screen will be green. And then immediately after that, if you put an SD card in here, it'll boot to this. But if there's an M.2 card hooked up, it'll boot to that. So basically what I'm telling you is that you can use an SD card, but you don't need one. Now, since we're all talking, I'm going to show you about one other thing that I really like. There's a lot of different versions of these kind of things, um, but what's really cool, I've really come to like this uh, R2 Top um, M.2 reader. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, there are two kinds, essentially, of M.2 SSDs. There's the NVMe and there's the SATA, and not every reader can read both, but this one can. So, um, the Raspberry Pi case requires a SATA SSD. And the reason for that is that you will not saturate an M.2 NVMe drive. Um, there, it's actually running over USB. And so although this is 30 to 40% faster than running on the fastest micro SD cards, um, adding a true NVMe drive would not make it faster. So this thing uses B plus M keying and all you have to do, it looks kind of backwards, but you put it in here. And what I like about this is you don't need any kind of tiny screws or anything like that. I use this for transferring images and all that kind of stuff. Now you don't have to do this. You can actually um, transfer the image using the Raspberry Pi itself, but this thing is pretty sweet. And of course I'll have a link to this in the description. So as I put this thing back together, about the only thing this doesn't solve is the availability of Raspberry Pis. I was fortunate enough to get some of them before the uh, before the shortage hit everybody, but they're still hard to come by. And they say that this year the supplies will return back to normal. Um, no telling if that's true. I kind of think it probably is. I'm surprised they're not back to normal by now. The understanding is that what they've been doing is using their supplies and... Um, providing them to companies that have basically based their company on the Raspberry Pi instead of makers like us. And, and I don't know how you feel about that. Um, you know, companies like uh, Canary, the people who make those honeypot devices, they're based on a Raspberry Pi. And without the Raspberry Pi, they wouldn't be able to function as a business. So um, the Raspberry Pi Foundation has been prioritizing people like that and allowing them to get their Raspberry Pis while we all sit around and wait. So um, I don't know how you feel about that, but anyway. So let me ask you this. Are there any other things that drive you crazy about the Raspberry Pi? Anything else you'd like to fix? Um, you know, to me, this thing is a godsend for fixing a lot of these bugs and these, I guess not bugs, these design choices of the Raspberry Pi. And, um, you know, I've been really, really happy with it. I've been running it. Um, everything is snappy. Everything runs really well. I like the power switch. Um, I did buy, and I'll grab it in a second. I did buy the um, Argon brand 18 watt USB adapter. And so um, I like that. I like, it actually does have a power switch on it also. Um, for the most part, I've always recommended the Canakits ones, but you know, there's nothing special about this, but it does seem to be a decent um, power supply. So I have that. Now, the last thing you have to do is you plug in this little jumper thing that jumpers the USB from uh, the carrier board up to this board. And then there's your little power switch over there. I don't think I pointed that out, but that is the Argon case. Maybe what I'll do is uh, I'll hook it up and plug it in so that you guys can hear how quiet it is. So as you can tell, that's both not a loud sound and not a horrible sound, and it turns off if it actually doesn't need it. So uh, pretty impressive in my book. Anyway, let me know what you think, and I appreciate you guys, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.